Welcome back to my channel, everybody. It's been a while since I've touched base. I was in South America for two weeks doing some humanitarian work down there with my church. We were working on a project called the Chagas Project, which is uh, in the sort of poorest areas of Bolivia. We go down there and it's my second time being down there. And basically uh, we plaster the interior walls of little adobe brick houses out in the countryside and then we um, put concrete on the floor and the reason we do this is to eliminate exposure to a bug called the vanchuga bug which is a beetle that comes out it lives in the nooks and crannies inside the mud huts and it comes out and uh, bites and causes all kinds of parasitic issues that really wreak havoc on the internal organs of a person and so it's a really simple solution and it's a real privilege to have been a part of that again uh, I picked up this fantastic hat in Bolivia, in uh, the city of La Paz, as well as this um, alpaca sweater, which uh, is really, really cozy. Anyways, um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that I experienced while on my trip for two weeks in Bolivia. While there, uh, we had a little bit of a shortage of what you would call connectivity. Uh, we were short on Wi-Fi. And this made it a bit of an interesting experience because it was forced time away from devices and time away from things like social media and texting and being just generally on a device. Now, I really enjoyed it. It was a very useful time for me to reflect and really take in everything that was going on around me. I went down to Bolivia with 10 other men and being for two weeks just able to engage with people one-on-one -on -one was really refreshing. And one of the things that occurred to me is something that, uh, actually there's a number of things. A number of things occurred to me. A number of things occurred to me while going through this process of being separated from social media. What I think we do too much in our life is we are on our devices. We spend too much time with our faces in these little devices or in bigger devices like computers. Uh, I know that many people have been harping on this for a long time, but I can, gener I can genuinely say empirically now that I truly recognize in my own life that I need to separate from the media a little bit. So what that means is I just need to be a little bit more judicious about what, how much time I'm spending on it, when I'm spending time on it. For example, as you many of you know, I am a father and a husband, and my kids generally get home from school <clears throat> around 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. And um, most times I will sort of work and be involved in stuff on the computer until about 6 o'clock when I have to. One of my goals right now is to sort of cut down on that too, so that when everybody gets home from school, I'm actually available for them and uh, just there. Uh, so for whatever they might need me for, I'm able to help out. I'm able to help out with maybe with chores outside or um, help my wife get supper ready or perhaps help the children, help my kids with homework or, or whatever. Uh, the other thing that I've noted is that being active on social media and trying to put out content like this really takes up time and I've found that sometimes in the evenings or sometimes uh, outside of my work hours I find myself gravitating back towards social media and I want to put a stop to that. Mm -hmm. While I'm with my family I want to be with my family not just uh, around them but actually engaged with them and with them and social media can really detract from that. I don't know if you've ever been trying to talk to somebody and they've got their face in their phone and they sort of acknowledge you, but you know for sure that they haven't really heard what you've said and they're not really giving you their attention. And I know I'm guilty for doing that. I've done that f so much to people. Uh, and it's always seems to be the people we're most comfortable with that get the worst of this. So I'm really encouraging you guys to take a step back and evaluate your own uh, interaction with social media. Now I'm obviously very active on social media. I've got an Instagram account. I've got a YouTube channel. I've got a Facebook account. I put stuff on Twitter now and then. Uh, and this is all really important for my work and for business reasons too. I just want to start to try to pare that down to actual business hours. Or if I'm going to do a post, it's a real quick on and then leave it. 
So putting the device down and just not having it around is a really valuable, really good way to do that. I recently, in sort of thinking about this video, I went online and did a little bit of research. And I found a couple of um, statistics around social media use. And one of the things that it said on there is that the average person will spend around 116 minutes a day on social media. So 116 minutes a day, that's like two hours a day. That's a lot of time. So think about your own life and the things that you're trying to achieve. One of the things that I was really aware of coming back to North America uh, from South America is that our culture is sort of twisted in many ways. We spend a lot of time trying to achieve things. We're very success driven and we're very focused on uh, stuff and not so much on each other and on relationship. And it's kind of a little bit backwards, uh, it's particularly in Bolivia. Uh, I mean, it's a third world country and the economy is really terrible. So uh, in, on one hand, people don't have the opportunity to work and work and work and make a whole bunch of money. It's just part of the reality that they live in. But coming back here, I just became, I guess it reinforced to me again after this, my second time going, how messed up and how extreme our culture is and how we push ourselves uh, unreasonably. And in doing so, we sort of lose focus on really important things, on relationships. And if you think about, you know, 120 minutes in a day on social media, that's time that you could be talking to someone that you care about. That's time that you could be, um, you know, sitting and looking at somebody's face, asking them about how their day is going or if there's anything that they need. If you look at our culture too, so many people struggle with depression and anxiety. And, um, you know, if we're spending upwards of two hours a day on these devices, it's really kind of no wonder why. We've lost uh, the ability to really connect with each other and, um, you know, we're just not, in Canada, we're already not willing to really open up to each other when we need help or support or whatever. And, you know, social media creates this illusion of support and an illusion of connectivity, but it's not really um, true connectivity. It's not really truly being connected. And it's hard to kind of get that quality of time that you need. I also did a little bit of research about hugs and um, we need a lot of hugs and one of the things that happens with social media is that we physically um, separate from each other and so we're just physically and emotionally and, and relationally unavailable to each other and that's going to leave gaps in our, in our emotions and in our life and we're probably going to end up feeling down and potentially depressed and it will increase our anxiety levels because we're feeling insecure. So. I'm not blaming all of our social problems on social media, all of our personal problems, all of our uh, cultural and political and all those problems. I'm not blaming all of those things specifically on social media, but I do think that social media is sort of a subversive uh, detractor to healthy living. And we have to be very careful with it. I mean, if you talk about the political and social aspects, that really cause us stress and anxiety. Really, there's no worse place to be than social media. It's such a, I find it often is a place where people just fight and argue about their political viewpoints and also post stuff that is very negative. If you think about it, like a hundred years ago, we kind of coped with the world around us, the immediate world around us. We had to deal with the stresses of day-to-day -day life of, you know, making ends meet and feeding our families and caring for one another and maybe for caring for each other in, a, in the context of a community. But we wouldn't be as aware of everything else. And social media creates this sort of whirlpool of, you know, events and worry and trouble and everything that we're constantly having to process because we're taking it all in in these really, I, th I would say, kind of irresponsible ways. So, you know, jumping on Twitter and getting bombarded with like 15 news headlines without actually like taking the time to really read about what that news headline is talking about. So we do, we're not really developing understanding in many cases. We're just sort of filling our minds with stuff and not really 
giving ourselves a chance to adequately understand what's going on in the world. And I think that that probably creates another level of stress and anxiety. You think about Canadian culture or North American culture in general and our desire to keep up with the Joneses, as they say. Well, social media is a real proponent of that as well. It's a place where you can always see, you know, oh, so-and-so is going on another trip or, you know, they've got whatever, this new car or whatever it is. I'm, you name it. That artist is better than me. That's one thing that I struggle with. For sure. It's a comparative sort of landscape where we're constantly looking around and seeing other people's successes and we just tend to think about our own failures uh, instead of thinking about the blessings in our life and the things that we have around us, the people we have around us. So I guess my emphasis for today and my first of these kinds of videos is that I challenge you to take a, a break from social media. I mean, you may not be a, a Christian or a Catholic or whatever, but we're in the season of Lent leading up to Easter right now. And Lent is often a time where people will um, let go of something uh, for a time so that they can sort of remove their dependency on it or just take time to focus on, um, on God or focus on relationships or whatever you would have. I would challenge you with what's left of their time before Easter to take a break from social media. Um, turn it off right now. <laughs> no. uh, I mean, just take a break. Just don't allow yourself any time on your usual social media outlets. Don't go to Facebook. Don't go to Instagram. Don't go to Twitter. Wherever it is you get your social media, Snapchat, whatever. Just take a complete break from it and see how you feel. See if it's something that you find yourself, you know, find it difficult to be away from it. Um, you might find, you might be shocked to find how much of a habit it's become for you. And, and in that habit, um, I bet you, you're not really tracking how much time you're spending. And you'd be surprised. You may be spending more than two hours a day on social media. That two hours is a lot of time. You can do a lot of stuff in two hours a day. I mean, what is that? That's like, uh, I don't know how many, how many hours of, in a year is that? There's... It's six, I don't know, I can't do math. 52 weeks in a year and, you know, seven, 14 hours a week. So, you know, 600, 700 hours in a year on social media doing nothing. So really, really give it some thought. And uh, I hope that you guys find being separated from social media as valuable as I did. It's, it's helped me sort of evaluate my own habits with it. And... Um, really emphasized to me that I need to be responsible with actually connecting with the people around me. So um, what I know is that social media can become a problem and for many reasons, and I encourage you to uh, take a break from it. Pursue your, your goals, pursue the things that you love, pursue the people that you want to spend time with and get to know. And uh, you'll probably see growth in those areas and you'll feel good that you've re sort of taken back some of the territory that you've lost to social media over the years. So I wish you the best and until next time, be good to each other. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content, please click one of the videos on the screen. If you'd like to be notified when all my videos go up, please click the bell icon. And if you'd like to follow me on social medias, you can find me on patreon.com slash Corey Lansdell. I'm at Corey Lansdell on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find me on Facebook as well. Until next time, you guys, be good to each other.